This is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV at Fan Expo. Of course, we're having the time of our life. Uh, now, joining me is, is, is Dr. Andrew Hogue from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. I know I've been taking some credit as project director, but actually, Andrew is very much one of the brainchilds behind ICO 3D. But, Andrew, let's start with something very basic. Obviously, you're a professor at UOIT. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the stuff you teach. Well, I teach in a game development program, so we teach people how to uh, program video games. Um, I teach, in particular, I teach computer animation, so the math behind computer video games. And I teach game engine design, so ma ma mainly software design, software components, etc. I have to compliment, I mean, granted, I'm sure you're an excellent teacher, but you have excellent students. I mean, everything that we see here, very most of it was put together by your, your students. Of course, uh, there was some inspiration behind that, I'm sure. No, I'm, I'm extremely blessed with my students. I, most of the students actually running the booth are master students and, uh, and, and just master students that have been in the program for about a year uh, and also just starting the program as well. So they're, they're fantastic, yeah. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about the program at UOIT? I, I, I know it's a game development program, but I understand that it's been doing very well. What kind of growth are you getting out of it? Yeah, so we, we are actually, uh, it's a four-year undergraduate program. We have about uh, three to 400 students in the program uh, throughout the four years. Uh, we also have a master's program as well, uh, focusing on computer science and digital media. Um, the undergraduate program has a, a focus on the technical computer programming, game programming side of things as a core of computer science, but it's uh, complemented with a lot of art and design as well. Excellent. Now, obviously, this took a lot of work, a lot of planning. What kind of things did you want to learn from it? I mean, obviously, it's ongoing, uh, and by the time this gets, it gets uh, published, we don't have to worry about spoiling it for anyone. What kind of things did we want to learn from this iGo 3D research? What's happening here? What did we want to learn from it? Yeah, so this, this is a part of a larger research project. This is just one study in, in a larger research project called IGO 3D, obviously. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do within IGO 3D is look at sort of, sort of how people are, how people enjoy, um, do they enjoy 3D video games, stereoscopic 3D video games? How do they enjoy video games uh, in general in 3D? Um, are there problems with it, obviously? And how does it, how does it affect their perceptions of, uh, you know, how, do, how can we... Per change their perceptions of stereoscopic 3D uh, video games. One of the things that we're looking at in this particular study is sort of in a multiplayer competitive environment, um, how does, do they think that they are at a disadvantage or an advantage uh, when playing in 3D versus a group of, uh, of 2D players as well? Um, so some players are obviously playing in 2D and some players are playing in 3D. And they, they, will, they don't exactly know this, but afterwards they're asked if in a uh, mixed environment, do they think that they have a handicap now that they've played both conditions? And so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we've, we're asking them before and after the, the event in, in different conditions to try and see whether or not they had a preconception going in, um, whether that changes throughout their gameplay, and, uh, and whether that actually is reflected if they do think they have a handicap. Uh, when playing in 3D, if that actually shows with the per, the performance metrics we get back with the with the game itself, and and what is the benefit of having this information? Do you think it could help game developers somehow? Uh, yeah, abs absolutely. I think it can help game developers. It can certainly um, help them try and mitigate the the perceptual issues. Like if 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 we find that people actually do think that there's a, a competitive disadvantage and it turns out that there actually isn't, it's just a perception, then that's something that we that game developers can use to their advantage and sort of say, look, let's break that myth, right? Uh, if it turns out that there is a disadvantage, then there's more questions. Why? Exactly. And then there's more study that we have to do. So can you tell us a little bit about how this study was done? There's obviously a lot of equipment here. The running joke is that we keep blowing the electricity at Fan Expo. Can you tell us what, what gamers are going through here? Yeah, so essentially we have 16 computers uh, all running Battlefield 3. Um, we are, we're hosting our own server. Uh, eight of the computers are in one condition in, with stereoscopic parameters. The other eight are, uh, are in a different condition. Um, they're playing eight versus eight and uh, having a lot of fun. And that's just it. I mean, you're looking at the show, I mean, people are just sitting down because the tournament's over and they just want to play the game. And that, that's really just it. They're having a, a lot of fun. So we expect, I imagine the results are going to be out in September. Now, this is part of the iGo 3D initiative, or Interactive Ga Games Ontario 3D. 
which is backed, by the way, by Ontario Media Development Corporation and, and OCE. Um, are, what other studies are, are taking place within iGo 3D outside of this Fan Expo event? Yeah, we've had actually, uh, since iGo 3D is a very multi-institutional, in we have about five universities and five industry partners sort of on board. Um, we've had some uh, audio research being done at Waterloo, looking at sort of audio perception, and we're sort of tying all that up right now. Um, and we have uh, a research study going on at uh, York University looking at cyber sickness in stereoscopic 3D environments to try and figure out, you know, is there an effect of cyber sickness or not? Uh, is it still just a myth? Um, as well at UIT, we're also looking at um, we're looking at things related to uh, floating windows, trying to see, you know, if you mask pieces of the stereoscopic environment, can you make things perceptually more out, out, out in front of you when the, they actually aren't actually out in front of you. So we're trying to see what the parameters are essentially uh, that, that we have to understand fully when developing stereoscopic 3D video games. Excellent. Now obviously you have a, a keen understanding of, of stereoscopic 3D and I know you've seen the cinema world of 3D and of course you've seen the gaming world of, uh, of 3D. Uh, do you think game developers should be following the expectations set in movies, or do you think there's a potential huge difference in the video game market? Um, well, there's certainly a lot to be learned from, from film. I think uh, in, in the film industry, they've certainly experimented a lot more with stereoscopic parameters than they have in the video game industry uh, up until now. But it is a different medium. Uh, interaction is certainly key, and I think, I think there's a lot of play, a lot of room to grow in understanding how to design your video game with that in mind. Keeping in mind, you, wanna, you want to really use the, the, uh, the main mechanic, which is looking into depth. Uh, as your core interaction mechanic, because if we paraphrase Marshall McLuhan, the medium is the message. Well, in Stereo 3D, we want to look in depth, and so you want to interact in depth. Now, this isn't based on research, because we obviously haven't, we don't have the results yet. Do you think game developers, from what you've seen so far, have really been taking full advantage of what 3D has to offer, or, or, or are we kind of having our hands tied behind our back? What's, what are your thoughts on, on what's been made available today? Well, in my opinion, so from the developers that I've interacted with in general and looked at, um, um, there, there's certainly interest in stereoscopic 3D development, um, but very few have actually taken, taken ownership of that. Um, I, think, I think it's up to the indies right now. I think it really is up to the indie market to try and find an artistic medium and use this as an artistic medium that is, that is worthy of uh, stereoscopic 3D display. And I think once you get a good indie showing something that is fantastic and amazing, then it's going to catch on like you wouldn't believe. But up until now, there hasn't been a lot of experimentation from the large group. There's been a lot of good stuff come out. For instance, Uncharted 3 did very well. Uh, in their stereoscope, with their stereoscopic implementation, um, but in general, I would say it's 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 quite lacking. And I, I gather, I mean, a lot of the display makers are making 3D very much a standardized feature. I mean, do you think this is a golden opportunity for the indie developers versus the the bigger players? Well, certainly, there's an there has been uptake of of 3D as a um, as a core feature in, in terms of home entertainment television models, etc. And those TVs have come, come down in price. So the, the hardware exists, the hardware's in the homes. Um, I think now it's a content problem. Uh, we really need to develop really good content. And that hasn't quite happened just yet? No, not yet. <laughs> okay, so iGo 3D is of course one of the first steps toward making that happen? Well, we're certainly looking at certain dif dif different effects and how stereoscopic 3D affects the people. One of the things that one of my students is actually looking at is looking at that interaction mechanism on the depth axis, building a game that is more suited towards 3D than the current games game offerings out there. And we're sort of looking at how people react to these type of things and if they find it fun. So we'll see. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. I really think, I mean, I've been working here as well. I'm, I'm kind of preaching to the choir, but really, I think this is a big uh, accomplishment for the university and for the iGo 3D partners. I mean, walking away, people are just having fun. And I think that's what's most important. And I don't know if you agree, but I think that's what gaming's about. Absolutely. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for joining us, Andrew. We've been speaking with Dr. Andrew Hoag, uh, UOIT Assistant Professor in the Gaming Department. Uh, thanks for watching MTBS-TV. We'll be back with more from Fan Expo.